Drunk Fish Gaming. Hello and welcome to Drunk Fish Gaming. I'm Lord Jim the Fish. And I'm Fighting Drunk. And in this video we're going to talk to you about Pride. Right. So again, don't judge me on not having unlocked characters. I don't have the gold to do them all. We will judge you. Okay, so Salvador, the Ninja Turtle, I like to think of him as. What happened to his... Yeah. It looks like his arms disappeared then, but no, it was just... Yeah. No. It's fine. So, first ability, Strike of the Fifth One. He's the fifth Ninja Turtle. See? Yeah, there you go. Deals 210% of physical damage to an enemy, 40% chance to gain shield equal to 10% of max health. So... Every time you use the basic damage, that's really good. Yeah. It's a lot of, lot of health and shield. And as a defender, that is definitely something you want him to have. Indeed. Okay, come at me one more, oh, one more at a time. More emotion, please. Sorry, come at me one at a time. That really doesn't sound good. No. Dirty eyes. <laughs> <laughs> please, no. <laughs> right, deal 400% of physical damage to an enemy, gains taunt for two turns. So, pumping out damage and gaining taunt. Great ability on that one. Mm -hmm. Steel Shell. Salvador gains Steel Shell for two turns. Steel Shell decreases all damage taken by 90%. Salvador has a 50% chance to gain debuff immunity for two turns. And I want you to say Steel Shell. Steel Very Shell. Steel times. Shell. Steel <laughs> Shell. <laughs> not bad, not bad. It's good to enunciate. Yeah. Yes. And Power of the Ancient, his passive ability. Salvador gains 35% physical armor and an additional 5% for each living pride character in the party. So, straight away, benefiting from pride synergies. Mm. But I feel like this is definitely a plug and play tank, someone that yeah. you could just put in any team. Yes, I would say probably one, the, maybe the best tank, yeah. possibly. Really oh, good. Agree with that. Right. Right, Hera. So, are those leaves around her? I, I don't know. They look no. like leaves. Uh, maybe. Some bad dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> right. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So, uh, precision strike. So, deals 250% of physical damage to an enemy. Hera gains the combo effect for two turns. Um, this effect cannot be prevented or removed. And I'm guessing this is like a specific thing for, for Combo Hera. comes yeah. up later. There we go. Uh, shred. So, deals 370% of physical damage to an enemy. Removes all combo stacks from Hera. Deals an extra 40% uh, physical damage for each stack removed. So this sort of mechanic is something we've seen in a few kits now. Yeah. Where it all just seems to have different names. Yeah, it just means it relates to the specific character that is actually doing the stacking. Rather yeah. than having multiple so, stacks on multiple So characters. Mega Will can't benefit from this. She yeah. can't benefit from Mega Will type thing. There you go. So Oasis Shadows. So gains a dodge increase and crit chance increase and applies both to one ally for two turns. All other allies gain invisibility for two turns. So, very useful. It takes away some of the control from your opponent. Yeah. It looks good. Cat's Stealth. So if Hera doesn't take damage for a turn, she gains invisibility for one turn, covers 30% of the turn meter at the end of her next turn. So if you're playing against her, someone with an AOE ability is probably going to be useful so that she, this doesn't then get triggered. Mm -hmm. So the leadership ability says mission holds. So all allies from the pride gain 20% dodge. When the battle starts, all allied pride tanks gain taunt for two t turns. When the battle starts, all allied pride healers and tacticians gain invisibility for two turns. When the battle starts, uh, pride fighters gain a damage increase for two turns. So useful at the start, but then you know you've pretty much lost any leadership ability, and that you know some other factions would gain for the whole battle. I know you've yeah. got dodge there, but um, yeah, and also the, another thing where they've used tanks rather than defenders. Yeah, you need to get consistent, guys. They do. Yeah. So yeah, so that's Hera. Ooh, Voiran the trickster. So I generally enjoyed this guy. Um, with his Ripple. poison blades, yeah, it's been good and useful from the start, I think, as well. So, he's Damaged another one I haven't put as much effort into as I probably should have. <laughs> so, Poisonous Needle deals 230% of physical damage to an enemy, an 80% chance to poison the target for two turns. That'll work well with the next ability. 
and the third, well, they all work well together. So, so Sneaky Manoeuvre deals 360% of physical damage to an enemy, deals 400%, 420% of physical damage if the target is poisoned. Then it poisons the target for three turns. It's a lot of poison. Yeah. So, poisoning. How many times can we say poison? Deals 320% of piercing damage to an enemy. Removes three stacks of poison from the enemy, dealing 100% of piercing damage for each stack removed. Piercing damage ignores enemy armour. Is that a spelling mistake? If you scroll down a bit, it's ignores. Ignores. <gasps> oh. oh. Fail. <laughs> Fail. Um, so it's it's actually quite difficult to use that one. So you're actually trying to find okay. someone that you, you poison so much, but they haven't then died by the time it gets around to Vorian again just to finish them off. Well, I found it really, really tricky to use that one. If you use it with other poison generating characters, you could really mm. just get the stacks going and yeah. have Vorian as your main damage dealer. Yeah, and they have poison across multiple characters will help you then pick and choose right the yeah. right place to have that damage. So yeah, that's good. Okay, so passive ability, double dose. A 30% chance to apply two stacks instead of one when the ability applies poison. So easy way to just get more stacks out there. Yep. Okay. Kagi. <laughs> what a character. Interesting. Reminds me of something, but I can't think what. Yeah, so the first one is Lashing Wind. So it deals 160% of magical damage to an enemy, 50% chance to repeat this attack. Not a lot of damage, to be honest, and only a 50% chance to repeat this attack. This is not the strongest magical damage, I think. So this is another one that would be great to test on, mm. because if 50% chance to repeat, does it then have a 50% chance to repeat on the repeat? Because mm. it doesn't say it can only do it once. Yeah, something which would normally get specified mm. so Tornado so it deals 190% of magical damage to enemies 50% uh, 50% 50 chance to apply accuracy to allies for 3 turns so same damage as the previous one um, but just across all enemies then um, and accuracy is useful obviously yeah. hitting a target is important wind speed so gains uh, haste and applies to 4 allies for 2 turns so brilliant Improved turn meters is always good. Yeah. Mm. So then the Alliance of Winds. So Kagi gains a 30% magic damage increase. If Bori is in the party when the battle starts, both gain a damage increase for two turns. And Bori is a character coming up later. Indeed. But again, another start of the battle thing. So, yeah. Yep. Revel. This is. Who were the magicians that got mauled by the White Tiger? I'm just thinking. White Tiger, that just springs to mind for some reason. Yeah. Rupture. So it deals 240% of physical damage to an enemy, inflicts be uh, bleeding. Beading. Beading. <laughs> Interesting. Bleeding for two turns. Mm. Not bad. Swipe. Deals 240% of physical damage to all enemies. So that is going to be... This guy is consistently kicking out damage to a lot of people. Good. Yep. Eviscerate. Deals 400% of physical damage to an enemy. If the target is bleeding, recovers 75% of turn meter. So that is going to deal a lot of damage. And if he's been attacking previously, you're going to have a great chance to regain your turn meter. Mm -hmm. Bloodlust. Revel deals 20% more damage for each stack of bleeding on enemies. That's something that's probably going to ramp up over the course of a battle. And then leadership ability, one with the pride. I feel like there should be a lion character that has this, but mm. right, all allies from the pride gain thirty percent of their maximum health and fifty percent chance to restore one turn of a random ability at the start of their turn. So they're gonna be stronger and reducing cooldowns. Always nice. That's good. Okay. So, Renara. Renara. That's right, yeah, I love that tail. How many tails is that? Three, six, nine, nine tails. Nine tails. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, it's close to some uh, trademarks there, but there we go. <laughs> and what's the umbrella? Is that an umbrella? It's Or a spear? It's, it's an umbrella. Yeah, 
That's definitely an umbrella. Yeah, okay. Cool, so um, battle healing. So it deals uh, 210% of magical damage to an enemy, applies regeneration to a random ally for three turns. I hate the random ally thing. That's really annoying. Um, so man, not so good, that one. Mass recovery. That's good. So heals all allies for 600% of Rena's, uh, Renara's magical damage, applies regeneration for three turns. That's possibly that's... the best all-team healer. Yeah, I can understand. Wow. That's good. So yeah, uh, I'm liking that one. Uh, resurrection. So resurrects a random ally, granting them 50% 50, 50 health and applying regeneration for two turns. So this is the only resurrection ability within the game. So if you want to make sure that you have the chance to bring characters back to life, this is your only way to go. I'm thinking Renara is the best healer today. Yeah, really good. Yeah. So second chance. Um, if Renara has two regeneration stacks at the end of the turn, she gains cheat death for two turns and recovers 30% health. So it's very difficult to get and kill your healer. So yeah, can't complain. So one thing you might notice is there is 145 shards to unlock her, which indicates that she's likely to be a legendary character. Mm. Potentially one coming up in November, December. December's next, yeah. 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 Soon. In November, currently, yeah. Bori. So, if you played um, Breath of the Wild, right? Mm hmm. I really feel like he belongs in that. Yes, no, it's, I agree. It's very similar design, yeah. Yeah. So, finishing shot deals 250% of physical damage to an enemy. If the target has the least health left, deals 300% of physical damage instead. So you want to be going for the weakest character, dealing that additional damage, plus extra chance to try and take them out. Mm. Wounding Arrow deals 420% of physical damage to an enemy, applies two stacks of bleeding for two turns. So that's really going to help. Um, I've already forgotten that other character's name. The White Tiger. Yes. <laughs> with his abilities. Power of the Wind. I feel like I've got that sometimes. Yeah, she's a doctor about that. <laughs> it's on the ski list. It's impressive. Bori gains critical damage increase, damage increase, and haste for two turns. If Kagi is on the battlefield, he receives the same buffs, recovers 30% of turn meter. <laughs> so, yeah, so Kagi and uh, Bori working together well. Yeah. Yep. And then Unity, the passive ability. Bori gains 10% physical damage increase for each living pride character in the party. If Kagi is on the battlefield, both gain armor increase for two turns at the start of the battle. So again, another one that is at the start of the battle, I feel like that's quite a theme over the pride faction. Yeah. And something you should definitely consider when thinking about leadership abilities and what to use. Interesting. So it looks like at the start of the battle for these pride characters, you need to really... So they're going to be they, they quick kick out, out the some gate. serious damage, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you need to make the most of what you got at exactly. the start. And we're back to the start for your unlocked sound door. Right. So we hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, if you did, please drop us a like, uh, subscribe, leave a comment, and use the notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on any future videos. Yeah, so thank you very much. See you in the next one. See ya. Drunk Fish Gaming.